Good, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Fabulous Friday TV. Women from all over the world are joining together today to TGIF, thank God it's Friday, but also to say thank God I'm fabulous, and we really are. Today, everything is about celebrating fabulous, living fabulous, being fabulous, and feeling fabulous. I'm Sherry Clergis. I'm in Vancouver on the west coast of Canada with At 45, the magazine for women when life changes. And I'm Anne Marat, and I'm the founder of Women Connect, an elite membership uh, program for women to uh, empower them, to upskill them all in one place. And I'm also the co-founder of Fabulous University alongside Sherry. And I'm very happy to be here and I'm so pleased to have Jane here. I can't wait to hear what you have to teach us, Jane. Hope so, hope so. <laughs> it's going to be an amazing uh, show today. Anne and I are really feeling blessed that you've come to take time out of your busy schedule to be with us today. And we so uh, appreciate Jane coming in uh, all the way from Australia. It's like I think three o'clock in the morning there. So Australia, or actually New Zealand, I'm sorry, Jane, from New Zealand. It's um, all right, not a problem. <laughs> so our show is being broadcast live on our Facebook channel at 45, as well as uh, it's taped and shown on our YouTube channel uh, later on in the week. So just when you're sharing, remember that uh, you're what you're sharing is going out in the universe. So today we're uh, jumping into summer. Uh, it's just the first week of summer vacation for many of us. Um, and we're looking for tips about creating a summer environment that gives us peace and pleasure, whether we're at home or cabin or maybe a vacation trailer. Uh, we're always looking to downsize and sort of reorganize so that we can spend less time uh, cleaning up, trying to keep everything under control. And so it's going to be a great show because I always struggle with uh, keeping my place organized and I wish I had a decorating bend and I definitely don't, but I sure love looking and hearing what other people are doing with decorating. And an interesting fact that during COVID, we would think that things sort of were winding down, but it's not true in uh, the spending of furniture, appliances, and home equipment in that. Online spending in the quarter ending May 2020 shot up to 12.1 billion dollars. So we were in the midst of COVID, but we were spending money on our environment and, and our, our home because we were all spending so much time there. And that actually represented a 50% increase in spending from uh, a quarter, that same quarter a year before. So that is a huge amount of money. So our homes are important to us. And uh, we want to live in an environment that uh, is, is pleasing to the eye and also meaningful to us, um, you know, as, as human beings. So I actually didn't spend any money uh, during that period of time. So I'm not quite sure what the problem was, but Anne, did you buy anything in, in the first quarter of that year? Uh, well, I'm so busy on my computer, I don't even see anything else except for what's in front of me. <clears throat> but I decided a, a long time ago that um, I, I should get into a routine of cleaning out my my cupboards at least six, uh, every six months um, and um, get rid of all the stuff that I'm not using. So if I'm not using it or I haven't used it in the last six months, it has to go. So of course, the people that work for me were very happy when they started receiving things because they were like, oh, what are you doing with that? And I'm, like, I'm getting rid of it. Can I have it? Um, and so I, that's what I do every six months. I clean out my my cupboards and I um, and I also uh, get rid of because of some allergies to to dust. I get rid of all the unnecessary 
clutter that's normally around like these little ornaments that are normally just dust collectors so um i i have i'm, I'm a minimalist if the if, if if that's the correct word a minimalist i just keep as little as possible around me so if ever i have to pack up and rush overseas <laughs> i can do it <laughs> just pack my clothes in and go <laughs> But anyway, well, back, back to you, Sherry. That's a good way to be, Anne. Um, uh, my mother was exactly the opposite. She kept everything. So when I actually left home, I, I went to that sort of lifestyle too. Um, but it's taken me a while to get there. But now that my kids are adults, they're always complaining that I threw away all their possessions, <laughs> things that were meaningful to them in their childhood, which isn't true. I have little boxes downstairs for each of them. But, uh, you know, kids, they accumulate so much. And if you're not getting rid of it, especially as we age, uh, you know, we, we want to downsize. It's, it's hard to take care of all that stuff and keep it clean, like you said, and, you know, dusting and, and all that. So I, I like the minimalist uh, um approach that's, that's the thing yeah. with that with aging we, we we inherit our parents stuff and if they've been hoarders or collectors or just stuff life stuff in general when our parents sort of pass away and we get all their stuff where do we put it's an emotional thing and so how do we get rid of stuff that we have an emotional connection to and i know when my mother moved from the family home into an apartment um throwing out stuff that she was just tossing out i while it wasn't necessarily stuff that I wanted or um, was useful to me, it had an emotional connection, particularly to my childhood. Um, just things that I knew that, you know, they bought on their travels and things like that. I mean, one was a beautiful, beautiful red, rich red Venetian glass ashtray. I don't smoke. Uh, <laughs> and it was, it was so heavy. It was really, really heavy. It was beautiful and thick, but I couldn't see it thrown out. And I took home quite a few things from my mum's place that I kept for about two years until I was emotionally ready to say, look, I actually don't need this. It's beautiful. You know, I'm, I have the memory of it now. And so you, you have, it, it, sometimes decluttering or, or, or just getting rid of stuff in general is a process of elimination. It might not be today. Uh, because you've got that emotional connection to it but a couple of years down the line you, you're it's okay I can let go mum's you know mum's in a new house I've got new memories there I don't need an ashtray I mean I only know one person that smokes these days um, and so you can and I won't obviously I don't let people smoke in my house anyway so I could let it go but it, it is a process and it's a and even like um, you know if you're decluttering in your home um, for, I can remember um, when the children were younger, I'd declutter the linen cupboard, you know, with pillowcases and tea towel, um, uh, tablecloths and all that. And then six months later, I'd go back to the linen cupboard again. And I think, well, why did I keep this six months ago? But it's, you know, it's, again, it's a process of it's a process of elimination. You can get rid of more as time goes on because you 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 realise you don't not you're not using it, you're not you know, wearing it or whatever, your own clothes. It's just a process of elimination and takes time. And, uh, you know, that's, it, a, it, it, yeah. that's a great way to put that, Jane. Like, I never thought of that, but it, it's absolutely true. And so this is a good time. Let me introduce you. We're so pleased to have Jane with us from New Zealand. Jane Beckenham started the Facebook group Love Decorating four years ago, simply because she wanted to connect with others who love decor and their homes as much as she did. And it's, it's experienced a huge growth. I think she has over 117,000 women from around the world. But decor is just one of Jane's life journeys. She's a mother, a wife, and now she's a grandmother. Jane's been married for 38 years, coming up next week. Congratulations, Jane. And adopted her two beautiful daughters from Russia. An author for 20 years of historical and contemporary romances. Jane has put the pen aside for a while as she adjusts to life in the third age, retirement and wondering what happens next. So welcome, Jane. We're so pleased to have you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm glad I got here because I only woke up half an hour ago. It's three o'clock in the morning here, so all good. 
Um, I am delighted to be here and it is, you know, life is a journey and decorating is a journey too. It's, um, you know, we can go off to a, a shop and uh, buy, a, you know, a whole room setting. You can go off to, uh, you know, big stores and buy everything they've got there that they show in a room because, it, you know, it tugs us and we, we like it. And we can put that in our own home and we can live with it and we like it and love it and the rest of it. But life is is a journey and it, decorating should be a journey. I very strongly believe that um, our homes, particularly now with COVID, uh, should be a sanctuary. Uh, and last year for, for us here in New Zealand, we've actually got through COVID pretty easily, thank God. Um, we've had a few lockdowns, um, but nothing massively. And we actually live life pretty normally. But you were talking about um, what, you know, what we did in COVID. And yes, I did buy things in COVID online. But the interesting thing with that is that there isn't much, um, you know, the shipping of everything is, is very slow. And so all the things I was buying online, well, not, there wasn't that many, but they took months to get here because of, you know, because of COVID. Now, I, I wrote some notes today and I probably, um, I hopefully I don't wiffle waffle too much. Um, and please just interrupt me, Sherry, whenever you want to, because I don't know whether you want me to just uh, blabble away or you've got questions and things like that. So just, you know, ask away or whatever. But last year with COVID, I think particularly that year, our home became absolutely so crucial to our well-being, uh, to our mental well-being, our physical well-being, and just our... Um, I'm putting psychological here is a different from mental well-being. I'm saying our, our, our self psychological, um, how we relate to everybody else in our home. And I think last year that showed up hugely. As you say, people were out there shopping up a storm. Um, because all of a sudden you're home 24-7 and you see the paint that needs redoing. You see the curtains that have faded at one side because of the sunlight. You see, you know, the sofa that's got springs that have gone bust and, you you know, things like that. You see, you're seeing it 24-7 because you're not going out to the office or whatever you do for work. And that's the only thing that you had control of last year was your environment. And when you have, you have the, the psychological thing of seeing something that, that you don't normally see or you can live with because you're not there all the time suddenly becomes a huge part of your physical, psychological, the whole mental well-being and just your and and, and comfort. Mm. I mean, our homes, I personally believe, have to be our sanctuary, and I and I um, I, I believe that passionately because. Um, as I say, you can go out to a shop and buy everything, and, get, and, and you, you said, Sherry, you didn't have a, you know, have have a, a, you don't own the decorating gene. Your jacket is the same color as the picture on your on your wall behind you. Now, I'm not sure if that's a faux thing that you've put up, or it's a like a digital background, or it's actually a real background. But your jacket has that color in the art behind you. So you've actually coordinated really, really well. It's there. You are there. The flowers have, are in the same sort of pinks in the photo. So that is part of what you create. And, you, you know, that's a de your decorating gene. <laughs> and who knew? <laughs> hey? Who knew? Who knew? Um, I think you decorating is not about going off and buying all these pretty things. I mean, that's the fun part. Uh, the bones are actually how your physical environment works, like the house, the physical structure of the house, how it works for you. You know, we, we live a lot better different now than our uh, grandparents parents lived. We live in open plan homes, mostly. Uh, we don't have uh, separated rooms for dining and living. Everything's sort of much more relaxed and open plan. We can see each other. You know, mum can see everybody while she's cooking dinner or dad's cooking dinner. Hopefully, but that unfortunately is not my case. I'm the one that cooks dinner. Actually, a fun thing with that during COVID, um, because it's just me and my husband and uh, one of my daughters lives at home. And uh, during COVID, I was just really getting sick of cooking. And um, I counted out that in, in 37 years of marriage, I had cooked about 14,000 dinners and I was over it. 
<laughs> so I made my daughter start calling, and my husband, well, he doesn't call, but my daughter I made her start calling. So, yes, yeah, so this, those, again, is one of those things that through COVID, it hadn't worried me beforehand, but all of a sudden, my environment, because I was cooking in the kitchen all the time, became really, really important to me. Um, so... I'm not sure if you want to know a little bit about my background with de design. Do you want me to talk about that as well? Yes. Or, or... Uh, the floor okay. is yours, Jane. You just share. Okay. And... All right. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about my background and love decorating and stuff and then um, get on to a little bit about decor and stuff. As I say, I might waffle because I'm kind of written some rough last-minute notes and it might go all over the place. So, you know, haul me up if I'm waffling. We will. Um, okay. As uh, New Zealanders typically uh, go what we're on, what we call an OE, which is an over overseas experience. And we typically do that in our early 20s. And I left New Zealand uh, when I was 20, which is a thousand lifetimes ago. And we usually go back over to Britain and we work in England and we get travel in Europe, Europe back, backpack through Europe and stuff like that. And I did that in my when I was 20 and I lived over in England and Israel and a few places. And then I, when I was traveling, I was 22 and I was backpacking through Europe. And all of a sudden, when I was in Italy, I suddenly discovered design um, and it was home design or decor I suppose or accessories and things like that now I had never flat oh I had flattered in London but you know when you're overseas you don't typically buy lots of house things because you've got to get it home and all that sort of stuff um, and I can remember having a little notebook or diaries I traveled around you know backpacked around and I was designed drawing pictures of the things that I saw and that was the first thing I can actually remember when I um, that, that, that affected me as about about my decor about my environment it was, I was taking ideas back home well I intended to take high ideas back home to New Zealand fast forward about hmm, probably me 15 years I suppose I was married and uh, we hadn't had children at that stage. We'd been married for quite, well, 13 years before we had children. And I did actually a, a course, uh, what we call um, correspondence course, what you'd call online today, um, an interior designer. And I qualified as an interior designer, but I didn't work as an interior designer because in New Zealand, we're a very small country. We don't typically have, well, Joe Bloggs, general person, you know, the normal person would not hire an interior designer. It's just not one of those things that we would do uh, and also you know when we were small our um, the availability of product although it's not so bad now uh, but you know 20 25 30 years ago it wasn't 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 expensive um, but and we'd moved we'd moved into one two three, I think we we're about our third house by that stage and we were um, adding on to it <clears throat> we'd bought a house an old an old old place we ripping it to bits and adding on. And that's when my design thing came in. Uh, came in. And uh, I can remember I wanted, I want the thing I was looking at is I remembered walking on the beach down in Monte Carlo uh, in Monaco and seeing all these beautiful, everything was pink and white and blue. And then remind, remember this was the eighties when gray and pink was like the thing. And I painted our walls, my husband painted them. Uh, and now I don't know what you call that fairy floss. We call it candy floss. That blue fluffy, uh, pink fluffy stuff you get at fairs that you eat candy sort of stuff. We call it candy floss. Uh, and I have walls that colour. Um, uh, which when it was going up, I was thinking, oh my God. But once you had the furniture in front of it, it wasn't so bad. <clears throat> and I had curtains. I made the, I made all my own curtains because I, you know, I couldn't afford to buy new, you know, ready made. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I had curtains the same colour, but I put a purple stripe that edging down. One that just about killed me sewing those curtains. I just about didn't have a nervous breakdown over them. Um, I hate doing curtains where you pull those tie things. That I would never, never in my lifetime ever do those again. So that's kind of where it all came through. And then I became a mum and we had to, um, you know, have children's bedrooms and things like that. Our children were adopted at the age of five and seven. They weren't babies. So it was, you know, just right into you know, fluffy toys and all the rest of it. And I wanted to work from home. I did not uh, want to go back into the full-time workforce. I've waited 13 years to be a parent. And so that was my 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 thing is, is 
my you know real thing is is my home and my family and my sanctuary and that sort of stuff and so I tended to um I used to buy masses of overseas decorating magazines so they were really expensive for New Zealand like twenty dollars for a magazine which would cost say four dollars in the United States um but you know, I love them and of course when we traveled because we went to the States a few times I would come home with masses of magazines in my bag because I couldn't get them in New Zealand um, and things like that. So there's always been a, um, a a thing there. And my sister, one of my sisters who's passed away since, she she also was always, well, she also was very good at putting a home together. She moved a lot and she's always was always good. I used to get jealous of all the um, beautiful bedding she could buy. I never found lovely bedding. She could always find beautiful bedding. It just seemed so perfect, so right. So those are the sorts of things that affected me. Uh, and then about, um, you know, or five years, or a few years ago when my daughter got married and um, et cetera, et cetera. And um, I was an author for 20 years. While I worked full time, part time from home, I did a night job on at night. I, during the daytime, I wrote. I became, I became an author. I wrote books, historical and contemporary romances. Uh, but at the same time, I loved um, decorating. And I internet came along. I absolutely adored going onto the internet and seeing stuff. I mean, Pinterest is like heaven to me. Uh, and so the, the internet opened up the world of decorating. But what I was also finding is the life of an author, and also we live slightly in the country, not four, four kilometres from a, a township, but we're still a part of the Auckland, our, the great Auckland um, area. And um, I was lonely. And, um, you know, I, I have a bunch of girlfriends who are writers uh, who I get with every Thursday. And that's sort of my non-negotiable, never will never change. But I was lonely. And um, I started a Facebook group, Love Decorating, just thinking that maybe other people around my area were interested in decorating. We could meet for coffee. That kind of started off okay. But all of a sudden, uh, a, a member who was on the group, who was actually a cousin of mine also, in Elkland, she promoted the group the group on one of her uh, mother's groups online and one day I had 50 people join one day and it, it went steadily for about three years with uh, the end of November 2019 we had 10,000 members then all of a sudden and with COVID it shot up to 100,000 by in one year so we grow an extra 100,000 people in one year I mean I was getting three four hundred sometimes 700 people join a day it was a massive growth. It's it's wonderful, but it, in one way, uh, bringing everybody together and people lo do love the group. They are they do actually literally love the group, and I'm so grateful for that. But um, as it's got bigger, the the, the closeness, the uh, the um, I was going to say not personality, but the, yeah, the, the the closeness that I had to a lot of people is dissipated because there's just so many people there. There's so many comment, you know, things. I I can't comment on everything. The 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 the, the, the snugness of it is not as as isn't there as it was. But then again, it's a wonderful group. So uh, I started doing um, online consultations because um, one of the things I noticed. I mean, if if people are into decorating, they will have read decorating blogs for years and things like that. And what, and I love decorating blogs. I mean, I remember discovering blogs and oh my god, it was just like sensory overload seeing what people could buy or. And, and how they decorate their homes and ideas for crafting and and just oh you know there's some, some beautifully talented people out there and one of the things I found with that over a period of time though and I had did I did do some blogging myself and stuff like that uh, and while I was working I was also blogging and all that and all that but I found that um, over time I stopped reading particularly last year actually I stopped reading blogs I was you know um, unsubscribing to them and I realized that what it was was is that people were wanting always more uh, better new the newest trend it wasn't about I mean to them possibly it was about creating a beautiful home I'm absolutely sure it probably was but it just to me seemed um, not that they were ungrateful I'm sure they weren't I'm absolutely sure they weren't but there was a, there was a two prong thing with it. One was that they weren't happy, they weren't content 
with what they had. And now I'm not a, a super greenie. I'm not saying that, you know, like we should be minimalists or anything like that. I'm certainly not a minimalist. I'm in my home office at the moment and it's an absolute tip site at the moment because we're in the middle of going to rip everything out and redecorate it just because it's you know there's always one room in the house that becomes a dumping ground and that unfortunately is our home office um but anyway so I, it, it kind of made me dissatisfied with the, the blogging world and the decorating world is that people you know you'd go in there and everybody had the same type of rug oh this I bought this rug and they'd seen it somewhere else and they'd somebody else had bought it and so on. and I just thought it was sad that they were never happy with what they had. And new was not always um, best. Uh, you know, as I said earlier, buying something on a big box store when you go in and, and it's all, you know, you see a room set in, in a designer store or, or home goods or something like that. And you think, oh, I love all that. So you bring it all home and then you'll love something else and you'll bring all that home. Well, to me, it's just not... Um, not, I don't know, I just, it just I didn't feel comfortable with it. I think that's what I think. I just felt really, it made me feel dissatisfied with what I had. And I didn't like that feeling. Uh, and the other part of it is that I think that, um, you know, your home should be a sanctuary. Your home is a, uh, a image. You project to the world of who you and or your family are what it is that makes up that sum total of your family. Now, if you go off to a big box store and you buy everything new and it, it becomes yours, yes, but is that really a, a true indicative thing of who you are? Um, and I think that goes back to saying when you're decluttering, you know, and you can't throw something out. Um, again, going back to that day when my mum was leaving the apartment, one of the things I told you this year the other day was that when mum threw some stuff out. One of them was a little toy sewing machine that I, it was about, you know, 12 inches high, I suppose, that I had as a child, one of those little hand sort of things like that. And it was a little bit rusty and the handle on the wheel thing had broken off. But the thought of throwing that out, uh, which I'm glad I did it now because it's a bit of an antique, um, was um, was horrible. And I've kept that and I use that in my decor. And it's, it's a unique item that one has meaning to me it has a history with me, and it's a unique item. It's it's different. It's not plastic. It's not um, something brand new and sparkly. But it's me. It's it's part of me. And our homes, <clears throat> as I say, need to be a sanctuary. But they need to be part of us. A, 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 um, it's, you know, when you choose colours and, and carpets and curtains, that is a part of you. But it's the accessories that really indicate who you are. I can go through three or you know things in my home. Okay, at the front door, we have a singer sewing table base that we found on the roadside 35 years ago. But my husband, you know, de-rusted it and painted it. The top of that table is a slab of marble that he got from a job. Uh, my husband was working as a builder about you know, before he, well, 30 years ago when he, before he retired and stuff. And that something came from a job that somebody was throwing out, it was only a super rich house that was throwing it out. They were throwing out all these wonderful things. Came from, got it for nothing, got the table for nothing. Then if we go further into my home, I have a gallery wall near the dining area. And that is all photos of my family and my children when they were young and my father in his army uniform in 1939, my mother-in-law in her army uniform at the same time, uh, my grandfather who I never knew in, in his outfit he got married in and my grandparents as the day they got married. They're all in frames I got for two dollars at this you know second hand shop. So they they have meaning. Uh, I do have some brand new art I bought for twenty dollars at a you know a big sort of box type store. We have a store here called a chain store here called the warehouse. Probably a little bit like yeah, probably like Walmart. That's type of thing. <coughs> so, okay. so I have you, you're mixing. Yes. Yes. Um so I I see that your Facebook has 117,000 people. 
And I, yes, I'm, sure, I'm sure that our audience would love to know, firstly, how you manage that. And also, like, what are the common things that you find on the group that people are, are asking as far as the uh, decorating of their homes and um, all? Okay. Um, uh, what are the common things? Really, they want affirmation that what they've chosen or going to choose works. Um, does this carpet go with the right curtains? Uh, they like it, but they haven't got the confidence to make a final decision. Um, example, again, of that with myself, I've just redone our master bedroom. I had a purple bedroom. And it's now gone to, I wanted to go neutral, which is unusual for me because I'm a real color girl. And I've had some vintage or uh, picture frames, the two of them matching. And I uh, took out the glass in the picture and I just wanted the empty frame. I've gone for a French country style. And I put up a picture of what I, how I had done these. And I really wasn't happy with what it looked. It looked a bit staged. It just didn't feel relaxed. And I put the picture up on the book, on, on the post, and everybody came back and said, yes, no, whatever. And it actually just confirmed what my gut was telling me. Now, you know, not everybody has the confidence to decorate. And, and, and again, you know, even me will say that I just don't, just don't think it's working. What have I done wrong? What can, and, and sure enough, I went back to my original plan of what I had, how I envisaged it. So it's all about, you know, you envision, envision it, but sometimes when you see it on the wall or in the room, it doesn't look as how you envision it. And so getting that confidence or clarification from other people. And we have some very talented de home decorators and some who are qualified and some who are just blim and well talented. Um, and they will give you confidence to, to go ahead or suggest something that you hadn't thought of. So it's an, it's an ideas-based sort of thing. Does that, does that sort of answer how what you How do you manage all those people? Are you running uh, well, I do have two. I have, I have two. I have two other people that help me. One is that cousin that uh, also here lives here in Auckland, and she's a bit of a night owl. But of course, we're on different time zones, and so you know, yeah. um, you know, with another administrator. Um, she is in. I think she's in Florida, but she travels around quite a bit. Uh, and so she's a lady from the from the group who I got to know really, really well. We were both quite. Um, you know, we just talked a lot and, and, I, and you have to feel comfortable with whoever else you ask on to be an administrator because you've got to feel you've got to trust them that they're not going to go in and you know things and she's a lot tougher than me she, she won't put up with any rubbish if people go in there and post nasty things and stuff she, she's like right, go on you know so that's quite the and the thing is that she's awake when I'm asleep you know you guys are up during the daytime it's now whatever it is half past three in the morning um you know typically I'd be you know I'd be asleep so she can take care of the crap that happens during the my night time and so on um and also um you know if i have to go away for a day <coughs> or i'm not near the internet or whatever <coughs> excuse me um they can take over and things like that so it depends how many administrators you need to have or, or help how much help you need i think we work really well together three is quite enough for me yeah, um, I'm sure. You know, do you have do you have a do you have a, de a decorating business as such? Uh, do you leverage the, the the your group for you know for business, or do you just do it for fun? I was originally doing, and particularly last year, I did a lot of online consultations uh, where I did room what I call restyle, which just goes back to this: use what you have, but with a little bit of help of new stuff. Uh, yeah. I like to be able to help people redesign a room or part of their home using what they have maybe something from another part of the house you know we go on to they go on you know zoom calls and we'll walk around they'll show me things i'll say oh hey listen let's bring that down here we let, i think you know can do that and that works really really well i haven't done as much this year i haven't i've sort of let it go a little bit this year uh just mainly because i actually basically haven't advertised it much this year at all um i ha i do have people coming to me asking me companies coming to me asking me to do um collaborations and stuff like that and I did one which I wasn't really I wasn't I liked the product but I didn't like how they wanted to word things and I having my writing background I wanted to be and they, their English wasn't that great and I you know I did, I did sort of subtly say look can I reword it but they it just didn't work for me I've got to feel really comfortable I've got to be true to who I feel I am the group is and what I am comfortable with I've got currently got two people asking to do um 
collaborations. One's a jewellery company, which I'm thinking, what an awful, why would they want a jewellery company on a decorating group? It doesn't make sense. But, you know, I haven't looked at it properly yet. I um, would have loved to start a subscription service through Love Decorating. I haven't. I don't quite know how to take that to the next level. Um, and it's also a quantity of co content base um, is how much content do you offer. Mm. Um, I can do, I do online workshops. I tee, tee up with another girl that's a professional organiser. We're both trained as professional organisers and I tee up with her and we can do workshops or I've done workshops on my own. I've written non-fiction books to do with decorating, which I self-publish. And also... Um, Oh, what was the other thing I think? I've just gone straight out of my head. Sorry. Um, hmm. I think, does that answer the question? <laughs> <laughs> waffling time. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah definitely waffling time. <laughs> it certainly, it certainly um, uh, has given us a bit of an overview because that's like, that's a very big business. And in my opinion, as a marketing person, I would say you need to take advantage of what you've got there in that group. And oh, my husband keeps saying to me, if we had a dollar from everybody that, um, was a member would be wonderful but I, I I just actually don't know how to go about it and I think that's probably why um, I've sort of fallen off the bandwagon somewhat um, yeah I don't have a lot of technical skills and things like that and I just sort of I just pulled back so it's uh, and I think you know I'm 64 which is not old no. I see that you had somebody on your on your a blog post or something on the group that it was about a lady you know you're never too old to start a business and stuff so, but I just, I think it's just because I, I don't know how to go ahead and do it. And so I haven't done it. And I, it's a huge opportunity. It's huge, absolutely huge. But um, that's what it is at the moment. Well, so, when, I'm doing, when I'm doing one of my free courses, I'll let you know and you can come on. And you're very I'd love welcome. to. Yeah, absolutely. Please. Yeah, you're very welcome to ask me any any questions. I can definitely help you there if you want, if you need oh, some thank help. You. Does anyone have any questions for Jane? Um, Holly says, I use, I use two methods. Um, uh, I have two methods. I use it in, have I used it in the last six months? And the other one is uh, when I pick it up, does it bring me joy? Oh, Marie Kondo. Oh, yes. <laughs> she took her the world by storm, those sort of things. That is true. And I, I've used her method. Um, uh, it's, you know, you get everything out on the floor, or on the bed or whatever. And you say, well, look, does this bring me joy? And it, it, it kind of works. Um, and also, the you know, thing how I used it in the last six months, again, it goes back to my like my linen cupboard. Um, you know, why did I keep that six months ago and I tossed things out? It was realising that, you know, it's a, it's a process. Sometimes we cannot get rid of everything all at once. And, uh, uh, and again, I think also, like, I know Japan has very small homes. I have family in Japan, and they have a lot smaller homes than we do. So, you know, they maybe they have to get rid of stuff a lot more, be more harsh on themselves to get rid of it because they don't have the space to store it. I yeah. think, though, well, as you mentioned, Jane, there's a huge um, there's a huge shift to, especially with the younger people, to start, um, you know, to try, which you were mentioning before about reusing things, you know, and and mm -hmm. one example is. Uh, silverware from my mother which might sit in the you know cupboard whereas my daughter would prefer to take that silverware out and use it every day oh so absolutely it, it's the old thing of you know you have your best dress and you bring it out on Sunday sort of thing isn't it um uh it's just not why have it if it's in a cupboard I if, for many years I collect Carlsenware china which is that cabbage leaf plates and stuff I have massive amount of business but that was 30 years ago and I don't it's not my you know just again everything it involves it's not my style today mm. um, I would love to sell it I've got a couple of pieces that two or three pieces that are you know quite special and I'll probably keep those but the rest of it I'd like to sell it my husband doesn't want me to sell it so either get stored in a box in a cupboard taking up valuable space uh, or you know I have it out on display which it is currently out but I actually in the middle of well before I woke up this morning, I had decided to that I was going to redo all those shelves and take it all down and store it back away in the cupboard. But it is, it, it, it's, it's a process. Decorating is a process, decluttering is a process. And, and if you can accept that, that it's not going to be all a rush, you know, rush, rush, rush and done, 
it'll be okay. It won't be too stressful. And do you have a couple starting points that, that you would recommend for people? Um, yeah, I do. Um, the, first per, the first room I would always, always either decorate or start decluttering in, always, is your own personal bedroom. Because that is the first place you see in the morning and the last place you see at night. That should be the room that is restful and rejuvenation to you. And if it's decluttered or not decorated how, in a pleasing way to you, then it's not, re, it's not refilling your soul. You know, our soul uh, and I mean our, our well-being, our, and our heart needs to be um, joyful and restful and, and, and refueled. And if our environment, i.e. the bedroom, is, is a cluttered mess with, you know, clothes you know the wardrobe's bursting with too many clothes there's exercise equipment in the bedroom and that's just a coat hanger really um then that's not rejuvenating to you it's not restful and so i always would start in the bedroom no matter what but again start with your clothes and then again you know nobody says how much clothes you should or shouldn't have that's up to you it's a personal thing uh, i've decluttered quite a bit of my clothes I actually managed to do my husband's wardrobe about a month ago I was like yes oh yes because he would not let me do it and he did he oh, I can't be bothered you know sort of thing and I finally got to do it I was like oh yes and everything I, I'm a bit OCD I like everything color coordinated and sad although don't look at the bookcase behind me because that's an absolute pigsty but as I say this is the dumping room until we redecorate uh but yeah absolutely the bedroom because you deserve it. You deserve to have that restful, beautiful place to sleep in and rejuvenate before you start your rest of your day. And just a quick question from Holly. She says, have you done painting cloth furniture? Just uh, an amazing purpose, repurposed opportunity. Okay, I haven't, but I have a friend, two friends that have done it. Uh, and I am actually seriously considering it. Um, I saw recently, I follow a lady on Instagram who's also here in New Zealand. I think she calls a French French country design. I'd have to double check the link. And she had a bed head, which beautiful, lovely linen bed head and wood, but she, for some reason she didn't like it. I loved it. So she just painted it last week. And I have seen this done on, on, on blogs and things over the years. And what the, the trick I think is, is to spray the fabric slightly with a bit of water before you put the paint on. She had to do four coats. It looked absolutely fabulous. Now, I've also seen uh, Lone Fox, who's a YouTuber and Instagrammer. He just recently did that to a chair, which he made it look like a leather chair. Now, I asked my husband about both of those because we're considering doing our bed head because unfortunately it's got a stain on it. And I tried getting the stain off and it's come up a lot worse. And um, so I thought about doing it, but my husband was worried that the paint, once it dried, would crack because it makes it hard. I don't know the answer to that. I haven't found that out yet. The other thing, I have a very good friend, a South African friend, actually. We have a lot of South Africans here in New Zealand, as you probably might know, because you might have family here, I don't know. But um, she's an extremely good artist, and she does a lot of painting on paint, uh, of painters, what we call drop cloths, you know, the painters cloths you put on the ground. And she's been making tablecloths. It's like beautiful work. It's quite time consuming. Uh, and, but she's done some fabulous, fabulous work with that. Uh, so to answer the question, have I done it? No, I can see it's been done. I still have got a bit of research to do on it, and it is a great opportunity because, um, you know, we can't always afford to have something re-upholstered, re etc., like that. So it's doing what, using what you have and trying it out. And I'm curious, Jane, what's like with so many people in your your Facebook group? What's the most unusual decorating trend you've seen or something that somebody's done that you've just been astounded? Um, we used to have a chap, a chap actually that would come in and he was a lovely chap and he was in his first home and he would, he was quite retro -y sort of decor and he would, you know, hey, I bought this, it goes with it. And the ladies were absolutely fabulous. With they were really sort of, really you know encouraging him it was lovely um trend, 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 trend. Uh, trend wise you've got a lot of it's interesting i think trends often go with age groups uh and what i'm noticing is the women in their say 30s 
maybe 40s for that age group uh, are going for a lot of sort of slightly boho or what I would call mid-century modern or uh, lots of black and white and that sort of very sort of spatial sort of thing. Uh, and I, <clears throat> I, had, I did have a, um, a newsletter that I used to put out with a, with a group every month and I featured quite a few of these ladies in there because I, I just love the look of it. It looks really striking. <clears throat> so that was, it seemed, th those sort of design styles seemed to, to me, and I may be quite wrong on this, but that was just my thing, go with an age group. Mm -hmm. Whereas, say, my age group would go more for the slightly cluttered look, I suppose you'd say, of like farmhouse and, and et cetera, et cetera, because we are of that generation where we have more around us, you know, the abundant generation of the 60s, uh, where life was full of, of, of abundance. So that was the quite interesting thing. Um, the other thing I do notice is that particularly because, you know, over 50% of our group is North American, um, is that uh, there's two things, actually, two things are quite unusual. Well, to me, are unusual. One, one is particularly unusual. The unusual one is that people dress their dinner table, their dining tables. They just like dress them. They put out um, all the linens and, and a theme or something. And they just, they I don't think, I think they use it. They just have it set there. They said, oh, this is my dining table this month and it's like all the tables you know, all the plates are out there in the cutlery and the glasses and stuff like that and it's kind of like for me that's weird because I use my dinner table every night but they do it as a that's how they they present it if people come to visit that's how they set all the time it's like 24 7 I think that's for me kind of a weird thing and I don't know whether that's a North American thing or just a, <laughs> an American thing and the other one would be that um um, Christmas time is or feet or um, you know c celebration thing that um, a lot of people decorate for holidays that I wouldn't have decorated for. I mean, typically we would only decorate here for Christmas, but I have got into the thing of decorating for <clears throat> autumn a little bit just because I bought some stuff when I was in the states and also for um, uh, Easter. But over there, in the North American market, as I say, particularly in most of the group, is that they decorate for Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, July the 4th, Thanksgiving, Autumn, Christmas, Easter, and I'm sure there's a few holidays I haven't thought of. Um, and then I think that's quite quite unusual. It's not something that's done in New Zealand at all. Okay. And Corin wants to know, um, do you shop for your clients to find uh, those special pieces? Um, I do. What I yeah, I do. Oh, sorry. Carry on. No, no, that's it. Uh, okay, I, I do. What I've done. What I've done in the past is um, okay. Say if you came to me and said, "Look, I want to be able to redesign my my lounge. I don't know what to do with it." Um, we have a uh, we have a I give her a, there's a form I would send out a, a detailed questionnaire. And then they send me particular photos of the room. And then we have a Zoom meeting like this. I go around the room uh, or around the house and we look at different ideas and things like that. Uh, and I ask any questions that I need to know about how the room's you, extra questions I need to know that might come up just as I see the room. Uh, and I get to know what they like and dislike and stuff and like that. And then so then I will do a design plan of how I think this room should look with what they want to definitely want to keep. Uh, and then I might. I will look up for things like side tables or lamps and pillows and throws and all those sorts of extra things or sofas if I think that you know we could get a better uh, design things like that so yes I do um, I will go to I typically go to places that I know that North Americans can use online buying like Wayfair uh, Rugs USA those types of places because while I can't get those products myself here in New Zealand I can see what's online and what's available to, to other people one design I did for a Canadian lady who was out and I don't know, New, um, what's that, Nova Scotia? Yeah, Nova Scotia. Yes. Um, and I did a, a lovely, I was really thrilled with that design because they had a house with lots and lots of glass. And uh, we were able to bring the lake into the house with the colours. We actually changed the wall colour. I come up with different visuals of wall colours and ideas and things. And it was a fun, it's fun. I love it because, you know, I can shop without spending any money. And I'm, But I'm also aware of the cost. I don't want people to have to think about spending thousands of dollars. It's not about that. It's not about lots and lots of money. Yeah. Yeah, we do have someone on the show today. That's 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 from. How do you say it? Nova Scotia. How do you Nova say Scotia. it? Nova Scotia. Yes. Nova yeah, Scotia. I'm there. Yeah, yeah. In Halifax, Nova Scotia. I'm curious who that was. <laughs> oh yeah, look, I, I'm. 
I keep thinking, I'm not, she's, she's in a smaller town, mm -hmm. but it's not, I have, a, I keep thinking she was out near, is it Thunder Bay? No, nope. it no, it's Bay? Northern Ontario. No, that's, nope. That's Ontario, is it? No, there must be somewhere else, but she was definitely in Nova Scotia, because I can remember seeing all yeah. the, yeah. Um, which was near a lake, anyway, but I'm sure there's lots of lakes there. Small, there are, yeah, small world, and I love New Zealand, by the way, I've been there, and it was just oh. gorgeous just oh thank you. thank you fabulous it's and very the, it's very cold at the moment it's, we're having a polar blast at the moment so it's very cold it's cold for us it's it's been it was actually quite amazing because when i reached out to jane um uh, if you know we actually had two other women who were supposed to speak today and i reached out to jane and she she very kindly stepped in uh, but it was so amazing because she actually has lived um, or visited a couple blocks from me in in on the west yeah. coast of canada so she's traveled a lot yeah. i have a big affinity to canada i've been there i've been to canada nine times and i lived in canada in the early 80s and um I was actually, I talked to my girlfriend who's in Vancouver, not far from you. I talked to her every day, well, nearly every day or every couple of days, we FaceTime and stuff. So, yeah, I have a big uh, thing. I, New Zealanders are like Canadians and I like Americans. We, we travel a lot. We, 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 you know, it's kind of what we do. Well, and I we think do. it's. <laughs> It, it's just amazing because you're talking about, you know, doing decorating and your business online. You have this uh, Facebook group and it, it, the world is actually becoming a very small place, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It is. It is. It is. It is. I would have never thought I could do online consultations. I, I love doing them. I, and I, and I, my, my thing is that I, I, I really like to make it affordable. Um, I don't, uh, I just, I just think it's something that, you know, because I know as a, human being that I couldn't afford to go to a designer and pay thousands of dollars for you know this that and everything so I wanted to make it affordable and hence also using what you have um, as well as bringing new stuff in because that's the fun part but also you know repurposing what you have I think it's really important and Jane do you just want to as we're closing up do you just want to tell the name of your Facebook group for everyone listening okay to the Facebook group is love decorating it's one word, love decorating, and uh, please come along and join us. There is questions that you, you know, when you join, you know, you, you need to answer if possible. We try and not everybody does. I don't know why they don't answer them, but this, not everybody does, but we try and get everybody just so we can get, a, you know, spam as our way out of the place. Uh, we luckily don't have a lot of that. We have some, but not a lot. But it, we're a very friendly group. Come in, introduce yourselves, have, you know, um, see what um and what we you know we're always happy to help mention mention you know if you do a post mention that you saw me here and and you know make yourself known you know put my name in and mention me that'd be lovely well i've just i've just um um gone in and joined your group and i've put the link oh, good. In, the, in the chat and uh and so you know uh, Anyone who wants to go and join, the link is there to, uh, and we'll make sure that it goes on the Facebook uh, as well. And if anybody wants to reach out to me too with, you know, restyling rooms or their home, just please just don't hesitate to uh, meet, reach out to me either through the Facebook group or message me personally. And, um, you know, I'd love to help them. Always, always happy to help. It's fun. Okay, great. Well, thanks so much, Jane. Anne, what are you going to, are you going to start organizing some room now or, or have you got a decorating idea that you want, want to put in place? Um, well, uh, as I said, if you, if you have to see my room, it is the bare minimum. I like the space. I like, I don't like things that, that get, that gather dust. So there's just the bedside tables, the lamps on them, and I have wall to wall cupboards around. So, um, really no other place besides behind my bed where my headboard is actually four big pictures. Uh, so there are very little, uh, things in my room and I'm happy that it's like that. And if you, if you look through my home, it's very much the same. There's very, uh, little um, dust collectors and um, uh, things like that. So I, I really do uh, try to keep down to a minimum with uh, with little goodies and people know not to buy me those ornaments mm -hmm. and uh, all those type of things because, you, you know, it's just, um, 
yeah i'm 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 not that type of person i i'm i like the the open spaces and and just you know the for me less is more yeah so that's that's from me and Lovely. and just want to say thank you again jane for for coming today and chatting to us and for also filling in for on the last minute for us um our other speakers couldn't make it not a problem so back You're to very you very welcome Sherry. not a problem yes thank you jane so next week we've got a very interesting show too we are going to go to italy uh virtually uh we've got gabriel who's the owner and manager of a beautiful villa outside of venice it's called the tori uh it's a family-owned villa nestled in the tuscany hills outside of florence the villa is managed entirely by family including his parents paolo and maria pia and uh, they've got uh, they've got olive trees. They make their own olives, uh, olive oil. They are. He's going to speak to us about uh, the difference between extra virgin oil, olive oil, and regular olive oil. And they go uh, hunting for truffles. It's just an amazing yeah. place. And we were celebrating romance next week, so we thought, let's take a romantic trip to Italy. So you'll want to make sure and be in on that show uh, next week. And I think it's going to be an amazing weekend here in Vancouver. I don't know if you've heard, but we actually set records for how hot it was uh, actually around the world. Uh, there's a little town in the middle of uh, BC and they- L Lint Is it Linton? Yeah, Linton. Yeah. Linton, BC. So uh, it was so hot. It was unbelievable. It, talking of about bedrooms in my bedroom, it was 45 degrees. So uh, very, very warm. So it's cooled down a little bit. And we're looking forward to having a great uh, weekend where we can actually get out in the sun. So we want to say, remember to live fabulous this weekend. You are fabulous. So have a good week and we'll see you next week.